today, for this story, we're going back in history a little bit. If you're familiar with the Civil War, North versus the South, um, the first president of the Southern States of America, the Confederate States of America, was Jefferson Davis. Well, today I am in Irwinville, Georgia, and over here on the other side of this truck, I know it's real light because the sun's shining right down on it, is a home. And it is the home of Jefferson Davis. And the site is also a historic site because this is the location where Jefferson Davis surrendered to the Union. We're going to talk about it today. and We'll probably get to check out the house and uh, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. All right, so all of you may know, because it is part of our American history, um, if you, you know, you probably learned it in high school. So the uh, American Civil War, the South succeeded from the North. They wanted to be their own country. And um, this started the Civil War. For the North, the, you know, for the United States, the president was Abraham Lincoln, and for the South, for the Confederate States of America, Jefferson Davis was elected to be president. Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, and Jefferson Davis was believed to be a conspirator. It was believed that John Wilkes Booth did not act on his own accord. He was put up to killing Abraham Lincoln by Jefferson Davis. Uh, in April of 1865, Jefferson Davis' best general, General Robert E. Lee, um, he surrendered to federal troops in Appomattox, Virginia. It was one month later, Jefferson Davis, he was traveling to Mississippi when he stopped here in Irwinville for the night. Unbeknownst to him, though, Union troops were not far behind. Union troops who knew Jefferson Davis was here on this property, they surrounded the entire property all out in the woods. There was Union troops everywhere. Uh, then very early in the morning on May the 10th, once everyone was uh, getting up, they stormed the property, took Jefferson Davis into custody. There is a, a controversy that surrounds um, Jefferson Davis' capture. Uh, now, we, we're going to see the spot where he was captured at here today, which is, is pretty interesting to see, might I add. But oh, it was reported that when Jefferson Davis was captured, he was wearing his wife's clothes that uh, it was one last ill-fated attempt to, to try to get away. For years afterwards, Jefferson Davis and his wife both said that at the time of his capture, he was ill and his wife had just given him her scarf to put over his head to keep the cold air from you know, uh, blowing on his head to, to try to keep him healthy, but who knows? Uh, Jefferson Davis was held at Fort Monroe in Virginia for two years without trial. In May of 1867, two years after he was captured here in Georgia, um, he was released on bail. A handful of wealthy Northerners, they paid his bail and he was released. After several failed business attempts, he ultimately retired and moved into his Beauvoir home in Biloxi, Mississippi, where he would spend the rest of his life. In December of 1889, Jefferson Davis would pass away. I'm trying to be kind of cautious not to get other people in the video, and I really don't want to get close to other people. Um, 
there's some cannons and stuff but they they have a group here uh, that's called sons of confederate veterans people whose ancestors were part of the confederate military and they are having a like gathering lunch at the same time that i'm here they built a monument back here for jefferson davis president of the confederate states of america 1861 to 1865. That's what he looked like. Right there. On this spot, May 10th of 1865, President Jefferson Davis was made a prisoner of war by federal troops. Wow. He was taken as a prisoner right here some kind of trail carved out through the tree line here but uh, you can just imagine in May of 1865 uh, Union or federal troops were all out here in this brush just waiting for the Sun to come up so they could uh, capture the most important person of the uh, Confederate side of the Civil War. Well, here's another placard back here at the end of this trail that says, Killed on the spot, John Rupert. John Rupert, Company C, 4th Michigan Cavalry, Federal Army. John Hines, uh, also part of the Federal Army. Uh, so both of those guys died right here on this spot. Apparently they had a, they were camped out here as they were headed in to, uh, to capture Jefferson Davis. They were camped out here and um, somebody from their own group, it was Friendly Fire, mistakenly shot by uh, Friendly Fire, Wisconsin Cavalrymen. Uh, so, uh, I guess some of their own people thought that they may have been Confederate soldiers and they just shot and killed them right here on the spot. Uh, they would have had a little campfire going that night and they shot and killed them and then came up closer and realized that it was some of their own people. So now those guys have been moved to uh, Andersonville. So now we've seen the site where Jefferson Davis was taken hostage. He was taken as a prisoner of war. Uh, let's walk back and see if we can go into the home and uh, kind of see what his accommodations would have looked like in 1865. So this is the spot. Now I don't know if this home was standing prior to him getting here or if you know they built it just for him. So already, there's a bunch of artillery. <laughs> and here's some old uniforms they found on site. Wow. It says, though the Confederacy never issued regulation overcoats for officers, hands had this overcoat made for winter campaigning. These things are actually in pretty good shape considering they're from 1865. See the CS there for Confederate States on the belt buckle? Homespun double breasted wolf frock coat. Wow. These were actually worn by a Confederate soldier. In battle in 1862. They went through several campaigns in Atlanta and Tennessee. Oh, wow. All kind of firearms. There's some more belt buckles, U.S. 1860s bullet mold. Uh, I usually have a sign. Oh, wow. Well. And uh, since I've had pretty much. Gunpowder. This thing's. This 
is what they held their gunpowder in. Yes. All the bullets. It's to, it's to the wow. Here's a, a Confederate camp flag, Camp Colquitt, 1604. Man, that's old. A regiment battle flag from Company H, the 50th Georgia Volunteer Infantry from Colquitt County, Georgia. So, the same Camp Colquitt, the same group. This is a portion of a tree which was located on the site of the present day monument. There's a picture of it, of that exact site where the monument stands. That's what it looked like. That's exactly what that site looked like, and he was captured right there at that stump. There's another shot of it there. That is crazy. You see the log there? You, you see the log right there on the ground, laying across the ground? That is this log right here. How crazy is that? Excuse me. And that's the old road that we walked down that led back to where it said those guys had been killed. I bet these things are worth something. These old books sitting here at the rise and fall of the Confederate government written by Jefferson Davis himself. Wow. That's the actual spur worn by Jefferson Davis at the time of his capture on May the 10th of 1865. How crazy, that was Jefferson Davis Spur. He was aware in that when federal troops captured him that morning. That's crazy, my goodness. Once he was captured by federal troops, he was taken to Monroe Prison in Virginia. There's a picture of him at Monroe. He was held there, Monroe, without trial. He had no trial for two years. There's a whole picture of it right there. It's the entire prison. Here's a picture of it from 1865. The water all around it there, you can see it in that depiction. The inside section, that's it right there. $360,000 reward. The President of the United States has issued his proclamation announcing that the bureaus of military justice have reported upon indubitable evidence that Jefferson Davis, Clement Clay, Jacob Thompson, George and Sanders incited and concerted the assassination of Mr. Lincoln and the attempt on Mr. Seward. Wow. That's huge. That says that they were coming after him for inciting Abraham Lincoln's death. That's crazy. There's a picture of Jefferson Davis. That's a really good looking picture, like, considering how old it is. This is they're on the porch of their home in Beauvoir, in Biloxi, Mississippi. They're on, on the front porch of his home in Biloxi. Man, oh, that's a really neat picture there. And, they engraved in the tree, Jefferson Davis captured here by federal troops. All in all, I think this was an interesting find, just to kind of run across it uh, without really knowing that it's here. 
So I'm glad I was able to stop and see it. Getting to see some of those old pictures where he was captured and stuff was really interesting to, to, to see those. Really, really interesting. Uh, I'm gonna move on, I guess. That's pretty much it for this location. It just He came here and stayed that night and got up the next morning and uh, he was captured by the North and sent to prison for two years. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you're new here, go down and click that subscribe button. Take it a step further. Hit that notification bell so you get notified when I upload a video. You never know what it'll be. It could be true crime. It could be a theme park. It could be something historical like this. You never know. Thank you all. I will see you again tomorrow. Please stay safe and stay healthy.